Hello everyone, this is the day 14 of the flow designer training and this day we will talk about that how we can create a custom action. So in this day, first we are going to create a custom action. So let's understand the situation on which situation we are going to build the custom action. The first scenario is that we are going to create an incident and then incident will move to the resolve state. The moment it moves to the resolve state, it will generate a PDF and that PDF will be attached to the incident record. So this is our scenario that we are going to build that. Now generating a PDF, there is a no actions available in our flow designer out of box to generate a PDF file. For that reason, what we are going to do that, we are going to build or we are going to create our custom action. That custom action is going to be generate the PDF and attach that to our incident table. So let's go to the service now and build that. So this is our service now instance and in this service now instance, you can see that I have opened that PDF generation API. So this is the PDF generation API document and in this um, PDF generation API document have a lot of documentation. So what I actually did that I opened this um, document and I have actually copied this whole code and pasted into that uh, our background script. So let me uh, tell you that what it actually does. So this is uh, the PDF generation API out of box available in our system. We can query to the particular table. I'm going to query to the incident table and then um, I'm actually generating a HTML. Okay, so let me go back to the incident table first. So I am opening this incident table and I'll open this incident. In this incident, you can see that uh, this is an incident uh, record and this have some description. And what I want actually, I want to generate this incident as a PDF, okay? So there could be different reason to create our own custom action. So for the, our reason is that for generating a PDF purpose, I'm building these actions. So what I'll do actually, I'll copy this uh, CSID and then paste to that background script, okay? So what will do that, it will query to the incident table, particular incident, this is the incident. And what I'll actually do that, it will generate a HTML for that. Okay, so it will generate a HTML and that HTML is actually going to be uh, converted to a PDF and that will be attached in here, in this particular record. So for example, um, if I uh, say that um, here call Uh, short description colon and then like that so what will actually do that it will um, actually if I run that it will be create a PDF and that PDF is going to be attached to this incident let's run that and you can see that uh, it's actually attached a document to the particular incident and after it is added it is giving me this attachment CSID and you can see that it's giving me that uh, conversation is successful and then it is giving that request ID and the status so there are a lot of information they are passing right and if I refresh that incident it will have uh, you know there is one PDF attached and that if I click that it will download and I can open and I can see that this PDF called short description and this is the short description it is attached right now in this case maybe what I want actually I want to create an incident uh, and then the moment incident resolve that it should attach the document or this kind of document to this particular incident how I can do that I can go, go and create a business rule and with the help of business rule I can put this code to the business tool, it will generate a document for me and attach that, right? But the same scenario or same thing I want to achieve through our flow designer, how we can do that. This is not only for the incident, it could be implement for change, it could be implement for other places. So that's the reason I want to build in a flow designer so that flow designer can generate a attachment. For that reason, we are going to uh, open the flow designer. I'm just giving you the example so to make you sure that how we can create the custom action for that reason I'm just showing you so first thing is that we have to create a flow to uh, attached or to run that right so what I'll do I'll click here click flow and let's say that incident something like that 
and then I'll select the system and then submit that. So this is the flow that we are going to run that. When we are going to run that, we are going to run on that update on that incident table. So I'll select that table equal to incident. And then what is the filter whenever the state changes to the resolve, for example, state changes to resolve. So whenever the incident state changes will be resolved, at that moment the flow will be initiated. And then I want to, uh, what action I want to do, I want to uh, generate a PDF. So I'll search with the PDF. And you can see there is no such actions available for that reason we are going to create our own action and that action we are going to use that so i'll click this plus sign first and then this time i'll click this action previously we created the flow we created the sub flow we are going to build the action now i'll click this plus sign and here i need to put the action name what should be the action name let's say that pdf generation all right, and uh, you can put the annotation description, whatever you think. I'm not putting that. So I'll submit that. So the moment you created that actions, you can see this showing that PDF generation action name. You can rename that later. Now we have an input parameter, so we can take the input. So if you see that in this code, what are the input parameter? The first input parameter is that which record I need to query on which table I need to be query. Right. And secondly, um, what should be the PDF name? So these are the three variables uh, things probably we need that later we can add more. So I'll first create input. So let's say that I need the table name. So this is a string field and that is a mandatory. Next input parameter is the sys ID. I need that sys ID. So I'll put that ID to uh, make not make the con uh, conflict and then we need that attachment name okay that is also mandatory three fields or three input we needed as a mandatory and then based on that it will generate a attachment then i'll click this plus sign here you can see a lot of actions or a lot of activity is there for which purpose you are building that. For example, you can see, you can ask for approval, you can create a record or update a record, you can create the task, delete multiple tasks. So our purpose is the writing the script, so mainly, so we'll, because these actions are already available out of box in our uh, flow, we can directly dra uh, drag on there, show that. So I will go there and then I'll directly uh, pick that called script one, okay? So in the script, we can actually, uh, use that scripting or we can actually do the scripting here okay here you can see that we have a options called which type of script we are doing we are uh, writing the instance script or mid uh, mid server script or core javascript whatever is your preference i'm going to run that instance script now here in the script we have a another thing called input variable so this is the input we get and here we are going to, in the script, we need to again create three input. So we'll click the plus. And then let's say that I am um, going to take that call. First is that ID. This is an, a first parameter. Second parameter is the table. And third parameter is that uh, name, PDF name. So these are the three parameters, okay, in this script. Now, this uh, input should be mapped this input should be mapped from this input whenever the first time we take the input so this input and this input are different so this input actually for your action input so we need to be mapped there so we'll go and then map there so id equal to this id then table equal to this table i'll map that and then attachment equal to this attachment name so what will be happen Whenever we are trying to use this action, there will be three input, which is mandatory, which is here showing the mandatory. And these inputs are we are actually mapping to your script input. So in this script, we have created three inputs called ID, table and name. Now, what is the next step? We are going to copy this whole code. I'm going to copy this whole code and then paste here into this code here in this area. Okay. Now, here we need to have the table name right so we need to pass the table name what is the table name we have already built a parameter 
for that i'll go here and then instead of directly hard coded we'll put that inputs dot and then we'll put the table okay so this is our para, uh, variable name called tables so we are going to use that next this is the sys id so this is hard coded instead of that we'll put that input dot here we'll pick that our id so this one we'll use that and next here the table name instead of table name what we'll do this is not also uh, we are going to dynamically do that so we'll put the inputs dot table and this is the inputs dot id instead of we'll copy this one and just paste that now last one is the file name right so we'll replace that and say that inputs dot name so this is our it's done now if you see that the moment we uh, actually run that it's giving that attachment sys id and then it's giving the status attachment sys id is that sys id and then status right so we can create two output parameter output variable for the script so we take this output variable the first output variable is the attachment id okay this is a string another output variable is that status okay and this could be choice we can select the choice the first value is that maybe the fill and this will be our default value and second value will be the success so we'll pick that so this is the second value so we created these two choices okay so we'll minimize that and then here what i'll do i will uh, map that so you can see uh, whenever we started this block it started with the inputs and then outputs so we'll map that outputs so we'll say that outputs dot what is our variable name so we created that variable called attachment id so we'll copy this variable here and then outputs dot we'll get the result in a json format so we'll put that result dot attachment id this is the variable name. next we have another variable so outputs dot status this is another variable and we are going to map that with that result dot with this json okay so this way we actually able to map that input and output for the script now these these input and this output are actions input and action output and this input um, you remember that so these inputs you can see this is the script input and this is the script output now i'll go back here and then this is the in uh, actions output we are going to create um that actions output first is the status um this time i'm going to put that uh, status name also type we can put the choice or a string i'll say that uh, it's string i'm not doing anything and then i'll create another output called uh, attachment id and then i'll click the exit edit mode so now you can see there are two uh, values status and attachment id i can map that from where i map that i'll go that status and map from the script there is a one output called status so i'll map there and then attachment id i'll map the script and then attachment id so remember that 
these input and this output are the action input and output and this script have a input and output separate input and output so we can map there let's save that and test that so this has been saved now we'll go back to this incident and first i'll remove this all this attachment here and then i'll copy this CCID incident CCID. i'll copy this one and now go back to our flow designer and click the test to test this action the first table name so we know the table name is incident id is the CCID, and let's say that attachment is name is the test and click the run test the moment we click the run test it's executed that our script and um, everything is done we can refresh the incident and you can see that the attachment attached to this particular incident now if you click here this pdf is downloaded you can see that pdf okay so this action is done so what we can do we can publish this action so you click that publish and publish now this action can be uh, you know used you can use this action directly to your ui action or else you can go to this flow again simply uh, save that and refresh this screen so i'll just refresh that and then i'll go and actions and here i can search that called pdf generation action so you can click that and then here in this table name we can put that called trigger record table name we can put that here call CCID and the document name call we can put the incident number along with that start time we can put that okay so what will be happen uh, the moment incident state changes to that resolve it will generate a pdf and attach that so let's activate that and run that now this action is i used in incident i can use this action to that change i can use this action to various places wherever i need it actually so let's go back and create an incident i'm going to create an incident first and save that so this is uh, the first incident created now the moment we resolve that our flow should be initiated and then it should generate a pdf and that pdf should be attached here through the flow and then action so let's change this to the resolve and then we put that resolution code resolution node and save that the moment we save that it should generate our flow so if you go back to the flow and go to the execution you can see the pdf generation this is a action which is um, i just tested earlier three minutes ago now if i save that it should first call to our flow so you just save that and if we go back to the flow designer and refresh that you can see uh, it's actually uh, pick that incident generate pdf at resolve that flow pick that and then it should call our action so if i open that it's called our PDF generation action and it should attach a PDF. So let's refresh that. It should attach a PDF. You can see it is attached a PDF with the time. And if you click that, it will be downloaded and you can see that PDF document testing short description. So this way, basically you can create your uh, own actions and that actions can be used uh, in your flow uh, there could be a complex action i just show you that for demonstration purpose i just show you that you can create your action you can write the code and um, you know in these actions you can add multiple steps also so if you see this action the first um, if i um, show you that so first it have a script secondly again you can do whatever things you needed like you can go for approval or you can create a separate even separate script also so you can do that multiple things here so you, it's not like bound for one script so this is for one script you can do for sms we can create another script you can do the integration also we discuss that in our integration hub class but 
uh, you can do a lot of things here. Okay. So that's it for today. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section. Thank you very much. Have a great day.